Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and this study of Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, titled, Holding Forth the Word of Life. This study is part of our ongoing expository study of the Epistle of Paul to the Philippians. And we make these studies available free of charge on BBFOhio.com. And they can also be heard on our 24-7 internet radio station, at bbfohioradio.com. You can listen to complete studies of the entirety of the book of Genesis, the Gospel of Mark, and the epistles of Galatians, Ephesians, and the book of Revelation, all absolutely free of charge via YouTube, Vimeo, GodTube, and Sermon Audio links uh, from our main pages, bbfohio.com and bbfohioradio.com. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, you can send those by email to bbbfohio at yahoo.com, or you can send them by U.S. Postal to P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. And now we begin the study of Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, titled, Holding Forth the Word of Life. This is part one. Of two. Right now let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time in your word. Pray you help me to uh, teach without having a coughing fit. <coughs> and uh, pray that everyone here has uh, come really hungering for your word, really desiring uh, to learn from your word, and that the Holy Spirit has control of us, each one of us here today, and can teach us from this wonderful book. Just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're in Philippians 2, 14 to 16. We titled this, Holding Forth the Word of Life, uh, which is taken from the first few words of verse 16. And uh, before we get into that, just uh, on that, that's the theme of this ministry. Uh, we meet here to teach the Word of God locally, but we send these messages out uh, free of charge on the radio and on the internet Amen. and uh, thankful that there are thousands of people each week who hear them we hear from some of them every once in a while um, and uh, this is a fellow named Dave he wrote and said hello Pastor Greg I came across your YouTube teachings and I'm thankful I found a good Bible believing KJV 1611 pastor that is not afraid to be a warrior for Jesus Christ Amen. I live in northern Illinois, and it's nearly impossible to find a KJV preaching dispensational teacher. Wow. I just bought the book, What Dwells Beyond, that's by Jeffrey Martis, Amen. on your recommendation, and will give you my opinion when I'm done. I have added you to my tithe schedule as well. I believe you teach sound doctrine, and I'm here to support you, blessing upon you and your family. So, uh, as, mo as everyone, most of you here are aware, the, we do spend a little bit of money on the internet ministry, but it's self-sustained. Uh, we don't ask for money. We don't sell anything. Amen. Um, but the, the Lord moves people like Dave, and they help pay the bill. So, we're thankful for that. And uh, we'd hoped to get the maps up. They're not up yet. Uh, hopefully in the next week or two we're going to have a couple big maps on the wall back there and we're going to show you places where the ministry is being heard and we're also going to show you places where they are taking our studies and playing them in churches and homes wow. because they don't have a pastor wow. that will teach the Bible and uh, most pastors today are sadly caught up in this church growth Run your, run your church like it's a business. They act like a CEO instead of a pastor and all that. And so Bible teaching is becoming a, uh, a very rare commodity among churches these days. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I have people, they, they mock it. Uh, a couple guys, one of them I think is just joking, but I mean, they... Uh, I talked about how, you know, it's no wonder Christians are so ignorant of the Bible because there's so very little expository teaching. Yeah. And he says, 
suppository teaching, what's that? I said, it's what your churches need, a suppository teaching. Because you're all backed up with nonsense. You need some Bible, amen? In our previous message, we saw that we're to work out our salvation. And i got to repeat, it didn't say work for your salvation. It says work out your salvation. And so uh, we're told to let our salvation show, working for the Lord. And attitude matters. Uh, there might be somebody in here right now, uh, your attitude stinks. If that's you, that's you. I, I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. That's between you and the Lord. And some of you just stink, but that's another issue, Doug. Back there checking himself. <laughs> we appreciate we appreciate those of you who take a shower and come here not stinking. Amen. But I'll tell you what. There's nothing. The, the smell when a person smells funny. That's bad. But it is worse when their attitude stinks. I'm not going to name names, but I've sat up here teaching and had people just sitting out there with a sour look on their face and just looking like they don't want to be here. You know, I told them they shouldn't be here. You should only be here if you want to be here. You know, churches do this to themselves. They, they've got the false idea. The idea of the local church in the Bible is Christians coming to meet. Did you know that? So these churches who are running around bringing in lost people and then preaching the gospel to them. Praise God if any of them are saved. But that's not God's way. Now I'm not saying a church shouldn't have evangelistic services. You can do that. But Sunday they met the first day of the week it was Christians meeting to learn the Word of God. Amen. So that they then could go through those doors and minister the rest of the week. Amen. Yeah, that's, that's God's plan. Too many of our fundamentalist brethren think they're smarter than God. Right. And so they've come up with all these schemes. And, yeah. and then the evangelicals, they have their growth, church growth programs and all that nonsense. Well, let's read here in verse 14. <coughs> Just read that one verse with me. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Boy, that's a heavy load right there. <laughs> and that includes, that's all things. Not just church. All things. How many of you normally would get up for work tomorrow morning, gripe, complain, and moan about your job? You shouldn't do that. Why? Well, you're supposed to work as under the Lord. And so if you're working as under the Lord, it shouldn't be something that you'd murmur about. And we should serve God. That's with everything we do. We should serve God with joy. Now, that doesn't mean this. Don't run around on your job looking like that. You're liable to be thrown in some home. But that's how some people have been taught. They think it's supposed to be, everything I do is supposed to be happy. And I'm supposed to talk to everybody like this and smile everything, everyone. Uh. You're scary, Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> how many of you know that joy, sometimes joy doesn't actually show with a smile on your face. Yeah. And uh, I, I'll just say this, I, I went through a bad spell here and people write me and, and or they just come up and ask me, you know, about how I'm doing everything and there have been some times I was in some pain. I, I wasn't feeling good. So if you'd come at that moment, I wouldn't have looked at you and went, this is great. You probably looked at me and I'd been like, oh. But you know what? I still had joy. 
So this is something, it's not about how it, uh, it looks on your face. It's something about what's in your heart. And you can have joy, and you can do things, you can serve God all the time with joy, even when it's not fun. I mean, we had people here yesterday, and we'll talk to you about but uh, work day, and somebody cleaned the toilet. Now, I bet you they weren't down there saying, this is so much fun, I love this. <laughs> I just wish I could clean toilets all day long. They were probably going, oh, people are such animals. <laughs> but they can still have joy doing it. You see my point? Or some of you may not, but that's the truth. And you can be saved and still be a sourpuss. <laughs> there are some people, no, sometimes I think you. this is more obvious on the face than the joy, the sourpuss. People walk around always, that's not right. You shouldn't be doing that. That ought not be done here. That, I mean, I had somebody, you know, we had people come in, they listen to the, I have music on. Now I'm a hillbilly. I like bluegrass gospel. Amen. Amen. And if you don't, you're backslid. <laughs> Amen? But we had somebody come in here and say, I just don't think you should be play, playing that. That was when we were at Sharon Hall. I just don't think you should be playing that music in church. I said, well, we've got a lot of problems here because you've got a lot of false ideas behind that comment. As, first of all, this isn't church. Amen. How many of you know that? This building is not church. Amen. Where two or more are gathered is church. Amen. You are the church. Holy Ghost is omnipresent. <coughs> He's in all places at all times. But in His dwelling in the sense of His uh, presence, it's in you if you're a believer. Amen. You are the church. And it, that's, that goes with that idea we talked about Wednesday night about that church being shot up. One of the first things people said is, if this could happen in a house of God, you're not safe anywhere. I got news, that wasn't a house of God. If you believe the Bible, Amen. how many of you believe the Bible? Amen. This is not the house of God. Amen. This is a building. Amen. You are the temple of God. Amen. If you're a believer, I'm the temple of God. And so the idea that God has some obligation to protect you in a building that you call the house of God is heresy. Amen. And I've always said this, heresy will get you killed. There are people who, who, you know, the Jehovah's Witnesses telling everybody they shouldn't have blood transfusion. People die because of false doctrine. There are people who teach that uh, life doesn't begin at conception, so they kill babies. False doctrine gets you killed. Well, because we have sound doctrine here, we know that this is just a building. Amen. And so, just like we don't expect to not brush our teeth and God just keeps the cavities away. We don't fast and expect God to give us all the nutrients we want just by osmosis. You don't quit your job and expect God to pay all your bills. In the same way, we don't expect God to do some supernatural thing to protect us here. Why? Because this is just a building. And that church down there, I, we pray for them, we feel bad for them, but it's a fact that must be stated. It does not appear any of them were ready to protect anybody in that building. And so that guy went in there to a gun-free slaughter zone and was able to kill at will. And all the people could do is jump on top of their children and die. And I'm telling you, it was because they thought in a church building, somehow they were safer than they were in their car at the mall. Heresy. Amen. False teaching. So you see what I'm saying, hopefully. You can believe something and it's wrong and it hurts you. And uh, coming back to my point is that there are some people who think that their opinions and convictions are God's. And so they walk around and they see something they don't like and they don't like it. Sarah puts Christianity. Yeah. Wait a minute. 
We've got two men wearing ties this morning. Call them out, preacher. I'm I'm on it. <laughs> or <laughs> or or you, I, we went to church one time where a guy saw Jenny walking in dressed similar to as she is now, and I think he changed his sermon so he could preach about women wearing slacks. <laughs> women in slacks. And I've got nothing against women wearing dresses, but the idea that Jenny's slacks are male attire, I could prove you wrong, if I put those things on and walked around town, people would think I was transgender. But there are people who get all these convictions. Now, if you don't feel comfortable in slacks, or if you don't feel comfortable coming to church without a tie or with a tie. Those things are between you and the Lord. So there's some people walk in here and see you turn that cup up like that and think, <gasps> Beverages in the house of God? You're defiling the sanctuary. See, that's, that's their attitude. And he just reminded me of Beaker. You remember Beaker on Muppets? Because that's what it sounds like to me. They're nitpicking. Ning, 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 ning. <laughs> psalm 5112 is a wonderful psalm. It says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Some of you need that this morning. I don't know who. I'm just saying that. In a crowd this size, I'm sure some of you need that. Some of you need to be reminded you're saved. You should have joy. Amen. 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 <laughs> Murmuring? That means no whining. We can read about it in the Exodus. Remember the Exodus? They murmured. Yeah. They were whining. I miss steak and eggs. <laughs> I miss being able to eat meat. This man is getting old. Buy something besides Papa John's once in a while, preacher. <laughs> yeah. Hit some of you with that one. I saw it. You know, we had work day yesterday, I mentioned. And I saw Johnny doing his thing on the windows and Doug doing his thing on the pews. And, and it wasn't sleeping. And... <laughs> Stephen downstairs putting the lights up and Mariah doing this and that and babysitting Gloria as she's doing it. And, and then Jenny came in. She did some things and helped with Gloria and, and uh, Jenny helping Janie, saving her from the Facebook monster. And all this stuff going on in the building. All this stuff. And I did some things too. And did I leave anybody out? I think it was, that's about it, wasn't I? I don't want to leave anybody out because then they get their feelings hurt. <laughs> Who? Well, yeah, Gloria. And you know what's great about it? It was work. And you didn't see very many people running around going, <laughs> as they did their job. Except Gloria. <laughs> they, sometimes, you know, you see people steam down there, you know, and Johnny, you know, and Doug, you know. But there was no murmuring. And no one said, of course, he gives me this job. Stephen gets the stuff just because he's married to Greg's daughter. That's the kind of stuff preachers have to deal with. I'm telling you, that's the real world. And none of that yesterday is really great. I think the only complaint we had was that you bought singles instead of doubles, and that was Johnny. Complaint. <laughs> In my defense, I know. <laughs> but really, I've had work days in churches in the past, years ago. I stopped having work days. I would just ask a couple of people I knew who wanted to help, and I'd say, hey, you want to come over? We want to do some things. Why? Because it was such a pain having a work day, and people show up and complain and murmur. And of course, the same thing's true about church. 
I wish the preacher wouldn't go so long. I wish the preacher would just get to the point. I wish the preacher, you know, and some people they used to say they'd go home and have a roast preacher for dinner every Sunday. <laughs> yeah. It's so nice when you can have ministry and people aren't murmuring. And it's easy for me to teach this this morning because I honestly, I'm not putting up with that right now. I don't have anybody here I'm preaching at, so I'm getting it right out there now, and if it starts in the future, I'll give you a copy of this and ask you to go home and watch it. But it's great. And disputing. That's fighting, arguing, bickering. Always, well, I don't like that. I think we should do it this way. Well, I think we ought to do it that way. There's nothing wrong with having an opinion, but when you aren't listened to and then you fall to pieces over it, then there's the problem. And that's the kind of thing, and by the way, this will kill your marriage, it'll kill your friendships, it'll make your job very unpleasant if you carry those things in there as well. Why? You shouldn't murmur or dispute and everything because for no other reason for the sake of your testimony. I mean, it's just some people look at Christians, and I don't blame them for saying this. They say, if, if Christianity, if that's what Christianity is, I don't want it. Yeah, I mean, some people look miserable. Now, there are others who are godless and claim to be Christian. That's bad, too. And we've already talked about that. But on this level, there are people who live good, godly lives, but they're so stinking miserable. And you're like, why would anybody want that? It's like an infectious disease. Read verse 15 with me. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Now, I highlighted those words, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. And you just go phrase by phrase, and it just sums it up. Be harm, uh, blameless and harmless. That means you're not actively engaged in some kind of sin. You're not uh, one of these murmuring, disputing types that, that people just look at and just say, man, that you're harmless, meaning that uh, you, know, you, you don't do harm. That's all it means. You don't, you don't run your mouth. You don't murmur. You don't pick fights and cause harm. Now, of course, if it's a Bible matter, that's different. I mean, if you're in a church that's starting to open its arms to the ecumenical movement, starting to open its arms to the perverted Bible versions, starting to water down the gospel, you know, starting to embrace the sodomite thing that's going on in culture today, all those things, of course you take a stand. But that's not what we're talking about in the context of our reading this morning. In, a, in our context of our reading, we're talking about people who are surrounded by others of sound doctrine, who are working out their own salvation, verse 12, that they should not be uh, someone that can be blamed, someone who is accused of being harmful, the sons of God. People should know that you're a Christian. Amen? Amen. Amen? And not just because you're a good person, but you should be a good, decent person. Without rebuke. That means a legitimate response to you saying, who are you to tell me? Look at what you do. Look at how you are. If you don't want people to say that, don't give them... Fuel for the fire, amen? amen? And he says, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, boy, oh boy, are you there? Are we there? You see, I think there's a hint there, at least, of majoring on the majors. I don't like all the music that I've heard some of you listen to. I don't think all of your jokes are funny. I don't even like all the things you wear. Some of your clothes, I just don't care for it. Your hairdos, amen. Isn't that great? Don't you want to hear that every Sunday? Don't you want me to stand up here and tell you that? No, you don't. Why? Because there is enough 
that is of a serious nature for us to join together and stand against and also join together and help hold each other up against. Amen. That we don't need to nitpick each other. Amen. It says, Among whom ye shine as lights in the world. I've got to say this again. I've said it on a number of occasions. We've grown up, most of us, if we've grown up in church, have seen that this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. That's more than just a song. It's supposed to be truth. It's supposed to be reality. And you, you know, you can test this, what I'm about to say. It's not a theory. It's a scientific fact. You can test this. You take a very dim light. Take a flashlight, for example, that batteries are almost dead. And it's very dim. And you stand out here in this room right now, and you won't see much of anything. Then we turn off the lights, and you still won't see much of anything. 5, 5.30, 5 6 o'clock rolls around. Lights are off, and it gets dark. Suddenly, that little light will glow. Then, you can actually cover the windows to keep the outside lights from getting in because there's street lights and things. And you cover up every source of light, close the doors, and suddenly that light will be bright enough you can read a book by it. That's you today. If you will let your light shine, it's getting dark, people. And darker and darker. And if you'll just let your light shine, it'll shine brighter and brighter. Every day, seems like, the world gets darker. And your light shines brighter and brighter. And so that's the question. Do we really shine by just being joyful, decent, and not crooked and perverse? To some extent, yes. But here's how you change the batteries in that little flashlight so that your little light isn't just dim but you can really shine like a brand new LED. Wouldn't you like to be like that? But not quite unless we are doing what it says in verse 16. Read that. Holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain neither labored in vain. So it's not just that you're living a life where you are a light and not a source of darkness. And folks, it's not that difficult these days. There's so much wickedness. People are living so wicked. And gay marriage and the whole sodomy thing, the transgender, transfluid, LGBTQ, XYZ, they keep adding... Uh, you know, letters to that thing. But somebody told me that they're starting to add a P to the end of it for uh, pedo something. What are they called? Pedo love? That means you're into little ch the kids. Now back in the 80s, we were told they would never legalize gay marriage. Yeah. And that's where you are with pedoph pedophilia. What they're going to do is lower the age of consent down to 13. They are. That's what I'm saying. They're trying right now to lower down to 13. I got to throw this in there. It's just a fact. That's, that's, that's what homosexuality has always been. See, in America, they've created a fictional tale of homosexuality being...